Hey guys, it's Lauren. Happy 2021. Wow, has the last was last year 2020 one of the most biggest years <laughs> in so many ways. But I am excited to be here. I'm excited to have a fun process video to share with you today, uh, documenting the gorgeous faces of my family on Christmas morning. I'm using most of the new Pink Fresh Studio Christmas collection called Oh What Fun and I've used a couple of the cut files which this wreath one that you're seeing right now is not one of them but I had already pre-backed the ones that I'm going to use in this layout whilst I was watching a movie relaxing because I'm on holidays and so I thought I would just back a couple of little bits here on this wreath so that you would know how I back cut files and I literally place glue on the back using just a like the glue that I use is the Nuvo glue and it's got a fine tip on it which allows me just to put a bit of glue on the back and then I stick the pattern paper there making sure that the piece that I want to shine through the color that I want to shine through is at the right side and then I simply get my scissors and as you see now I'm just trimming around the outside of those um, that's how I do it that on really fiddly cut files there are times when I'll trace the shape and cut them out and then stick it on but 99% of the cut files the way I back them is exactly that but we're going to put that aside now and we're going to bring in the cut files that I've already backed and my photos and I'm going to put this layout together for you. See I've backed those ones there and I've got these gorgeous Christmas bubbles there. Both of those cut files that you see me using are from Pink Fresh Studio. You can find that in the Pink Fresh Studio um, uh, online store under the cut file section you can see those there and as you can see that um, the floral elements there the floral borders you can see that they're not overly a Christmas design it's not holly that you're seeing or anything like that but just by backing them in Christmas colors um, and I'm going to add those Christmas bubbles all of a sudden a normal a normal cut file that has is not Christmas themed is now easily sort of melding into a Christmas layout. So I've got five photos here today, five photo layout on one 12 by 12 inch. This is some kind of record for me because usually I'm like a one photo layout kind of girl. <laughs> but I just sort of wanted to capture the, um, capture a like an overview of my family's faces on Christmas morning and of course this will feature probably on the wall somewhere that will come out um, on Christmas Day next year so you can we can do a bit of reflection back on the previous year's photos and faces and that's how I've done so each of these photos um, what I've done is I've used the Project Life app and I have um, set it to be able to print four photos on one standard four by six inch photo so the, you're going to push me to work that out but that would probably make it um, two by three inch photos there and I've got five across the middle so as you can see one thing that I do on 95% of my layouts is I back the my photos because I don't want my photos to get lost I usually rough up the edges to give them a bit of a border a bit of texture and sometimes I'll even do a double mount which you'll see me do here in a second the reason for that even though I've got five photos there and clearly they're going to stand out is I really don't want them to get lost in all the busyness of the of the page and the embellishments and the mixed media and things that that are yet to happen um, and I think that I've sort of achieved that I try to achieve that nice balance on all my layouts there I'm not getting pedantic about making sure my borders are exactly measured or anything along those lines because I do like those edges roughed up so I know that as soon as I get my edge distressor there and rough up the edges um, it's all going to be higgledy piggledy anyway so um, me worrying about having exactly a millimeter or two millimeter border around each of my photos that doesn't apply to me um, because I like that sort of rough textured kind of look there 
So yeah, this little edge distresser, I've been working it hard for years. It's time for a new one and someone on my last video suggested that Tim Holtz has a little edge distresser because I don't think I can find that one. That's a Prima one. It's been, it's a great one because it's like big and it has other kind of textury things on it that I've used from time to time. So one thing I'm going to do in a second, which I'm going to jump ahead even though you're seeing I'm not, I'm not doing it now, but I'm going to apply some white gesso on the background and you're probably thinking, Lauren, you've got a white cut file on a white background. It's just all going to get lost. But what I'm doing is by using some foam tape here and mounting it and bringing it off the page, even though that I have a, a white washed out section behind the cut file, just by adding that little bit of dimension, it really jumps off the page. And you can, even though they're both the same color, you can really distinguish the different um, different levels and the cut file doesn't get lost there. The other thing that helps that is also the embellishments that I'll put on shortly as well. So I use Liquitex white gesso, just a silicon brush that's always been my go-to for gesso and I just using the cut files as a guide I'm just blocking out a square or a section of gesso so as you can see I'm thinking yeah I need a bit more there I'm going to sit the cut file back on oh no I still can't see enough there I'm going to put that embellishment there I'm thinking so I'm going to have to do a little bit more up there so it's just a bit playing around so the other thing that I like to do when um, I have having a block of color or not color white um, in, in a section is to help the block transition into the pattern paper or into the playing card stock or whatever I'm doing um, I usually put some splatters around and that's sort of going it's sort of helping that transition from that large block of color into that pattern paper background and sort of just making a bit of a bridge for them. I hope that makes sense. So like I probably don't make sense. It sounds, I'm thinking about it, it sounds ridiculous <laughs> what I'm talking about. But in my head when I'm making these things, these are the things that I'm thinking about a little. I just don't want it to be a big white blob there with sharp edges sort of in the middle of the page. I'm trying to work out ways how to sort of smooth it out and sort of blend it into the background. Um, and by adding a few splatters like you see there um, it does the trick by doing that so well it makes me happy anyway <laughs> at the end I'm also going to add some extra splatters using the Heidi Swap color shine some beautiful gold color shine and then um, so you'll see me just sort of finishing off with that and I'm also going to um, add in lots of embellishments and lots of layers there just to sort of bring it all to life this is a labor of love I have this massive huge roll of a double-sided foam tape um, which is really great it's sort of it's um, acid-free it's I get it from Bunnings which is a local hardware store like a big big kind of hardware store and it's designed to cut um, you cut it and put your photos like your picture frames on the wall um, so it's really great but when you start getting down lower into the roll it's like the backing has become like really really tricky when it when I first started using the roll the outer edges were really great but I think the tighter the roll is as it's gone in makes it tricky to get the back off so this is a labor of love but as you'll see um, shortly when it all comes together it's well worth taking the time to pull off all these, uh, <laughs> these the backs of all this foam tape um, but yeah once you get something in your mind the way you like it it's hard to De derail or like detour onto something else when you've got a bit of a one when, when the vision is actually there so yeah happy 2021 that this is an exciting time I hope for all of you a bit of a fresh start a bit of a feeling a fresh start a lot of scrappers are thinking about their uh, word for the year or their sort of their philosophy that they're going to kind of live by over the next 12 months. Um, I haven't really thought too much about a particular word, but I think I'm, I'm really hoping to sort of do a bit of a reset. Like I'm going to try and cull my craft room. I'm going to try and um, sort of say no to a few commitments and just sort of 
like take a minute to kind of step back and have a look at what's going on in my life as a be as opposed to being really reactive and just getting things done and anyway let's see in 12 months time I'll probably give you a bit of an update on whether that was a successful year or not but that's where I'm kind of thinking at I guess I've I've got a little bit of time off work which gives my head a bit of time to sort of think about some things which is lovely and obviously do a bit of scrapbooking um, but that's where I'm kind of at. Have you got a bit of a, have you got any goals for the year? Have you got a word for the year? I'd love to hear it. In particular, I'd love to hear, have you set your scrappy goals? Have you set any like creative goals for yourself? Do you want to do project life? Do you want to, um, and keep up with it? Do you want to get out an art journal and start dabbling in art journaling? Do you want to, you know, have a go at mini books or beyond the page stuff, things like that. I'd love to hear some of your ideas around um, what your 2021 is going to look like um, creatively. So let me know in the comments, inspire me, give me some ideas. Now these gorgeous little Christmas baubles, these cut file, I have this um, vellum adhesive um and as you can see, I'm peeling off the back, but it's this double, well, it's not double-sided, it's vellum, adhesive back vellum, here it is, and if, look, I don't know, I think I got it in the bargain bin at Spotlight, um, and it, it's really, actually really handy, because if I had backed those cut files in another colour, they would be really bold and really stand out. But just adding a little bit of vellum has still allowed a bit of the pattern paper to shine through, but certainly amplified that Christmas feel. You know, I think they're really cute, but they are really, when I cut them, they're really quite dominant little shapes there. So I just by adding that vellum sort of sort of blended them into the background but still gave that festive kind of Christmassy feel that I was after. So as you can see I'm just playing around with all the embellishments um, out of that Pink Fresh Studio collection and it's all coming together just as I'd hoped. Really beautiful. The other thing that I'm trying to think about here is I had the holly on top of the Christmas baubles. I backed in green, but there was nowhere else on the layout had I put any green. So what I wanted to do is try and tie in just a few little green elements around the layout and just to sort of balance the, those little bits of holly in there. And I think that when we're scrapbooking layouts, we're thinking about spreading our color palette around the page not piling all like the pink things in one section and the blue things in another section well actually sorry I'll, I'll take that back because that looks really nice at times <laughs> as well and I've done layouts like that but when you're not planning on creating those color color cluster layouts sort of can be mindful of um your color and making sure it's sort of evenly dispersed around your page and that will help that kind of uh, consistency and bringing the layout all together those we're adding those flowers in a few little florals some extra green holly there and adding some sweet puffy stickers now and this is just the playing part this is the fun part and then shortly I'll add a bit of journaling and that will be my layout complete um yeah, please, if you've got any questions about how this layout came together, I know I detoured there about our scrappy goals and 2021, but if you've definitely got any questions, I would love to hear from you. If you would like to support my channel and you're not already a subscriber, please become a subscriber if you like my style. And also to help my channel out is if you share my video on your favorite scrappy platform and introduce others to my channel that is also a lovely gift that you can give me um, a 2021 gift if you like my style so here we are finishing off with those Heidi swap splatters and my layout is all complete and I just love it there's my gorgeous family faces on Christmas morning and um, I couldn't be happier all right guys takes care happy scrapping bye